A pleasure to re introduce uh, Representative Bob Melhoff. Uh, Bob made a career out of being a math and science teacher. Uh, after that, uh, he uh, ran and, and got elected to the state legislature, state house from the west side of Great Falls, uh, where one of the levy problems uh, exists right now, so he can give us an on-the-ground view of it. Uh, he's, a, he's a decent guy and a fair softball player. Thank you, Thank you Senator uh, <coughs> Pryor, for inviting me here and uh, Senator Landrau, and uh, also Senator Tester, thank you for your kind comments about my softball ability. <laughs> my name is Robert Melhoff, and I am a state representative from District 26 in Montana. I represent the West Great Falls Flood Control Drainage District and also the Vaughn Small uh, Drainage District. For the sake of time, I'll quote statistics from Great Falls levy only. The Vaughn levy is smaller but has proportionately fewer properties. The Great Falls levy system is a 7.65 mile project. It is designed, engineered, and constructed by the Corps of Engineers and was completed in 1987 at a cost of over $10 million federal and $2 million local. The levy has been inspected annually by the Army Corps and has passed every annual inspection. A periodic or five-year inspection was just completed but we have not received the results yet. We anticipate no problems in that uh, uh, particular inspection, however. <clears throat> now the flood district has been told that in addition to the Army Corps inspection, there will be new and costly requirements from FEMA for levy accreditation from the National Flood Insurance Program. At about the same time, Great Falls learned that FEMA will require accreditation for the levies, we also learned that the Army Corps no longer performs these accreditations. Without the Corps, the communities alone will have to bear the cost of private engineering firms to conduct this expensive study. Since the levies were built, the, the Corps of Engineers have accepted responsibility to ensure levy safety. In fact, uh, other levies in Montana have been certified by the Seattle District, as was stated earlier by Senator Tester. The Army Corps and FEMA's cooperation that had worked for decades no longer exists, and the losers are the levy districts that will be forced to pay for these additional requirements. The levy district in Great Falls and Vaughan are small, sparsely populated, and low-income areas. Altogether, there's approximately 1,000 properties behind the nearly eight miles of levies. Great Falls and Vaughan simply do not have the population or the tax base to pay for these increased FEMA requirements without the help of the Corps. As if there wasn't enough, we're told that uh, they may have to redo these expensive studies every five to ten years. FEMA has asked Great Falls, the Flood District, Cascade County to enter into a provisionally accredited levy agreement, the PAL, with FEMA. The PAL would obligate the community to accept full responsibility for levy certification and the costs that come with it, and would set a deadline of two years for the completion of certification process. If we do not sign the PAL agreement, our levy will be accredited, deaccredited, uh, as soon as FEMA's new maps go into effect. The flood insurance will become prohibitively expensive for my low income and moderate income constituents. We cannot afford the cost to pay a private engineer to certify the levies, and we cannot afford the flood insurance if we do not complete the certification process. This dilemma is having a devastating effect on our area. I appreciate that the fact that FEMA and the Army Corps have at least come to Great Falls to do some community outreach, and we are grateful to Senator Tester for his work to help bring representatives from these agencies to hear firsthand from the community. But the fact remains that for Great Falls and many other small cities, the towns in, in our, and many other towns in our countries, we do not have the resources to fund our own levy accreditation required by FEMA. And it should not take the personal intervention of a U.S. Senator for FEMA and the Army Corps to work together to hear from folks uh, and to uh, come up with some decisions. Because of the economy, folks in my district are having a difficult time making ends meet. Many families could lose their homes if large unanticipated costs are added to their monthly expenses. People who want to sell their homes are finding fewer uh, prospective buyers willing to take a chance to purchase a home in the affected area. We had over 800 people show up, many in a Montana blizzard with chill factors well below zero 
to sign a request of our congressional delegation to find a solution. That's the degree, degree of concern that's out there. We have had many meetings uh, and conferences called uh, with the Corps and FEMA. We feel that the buck keeps getting passed back and forth and we're not getting definite answers on what core data can be used in the certification process. Decision on what data can be used is essential to determine what FEMA certification will cost our local community. We need the Army Corps and FEMA to sit down, go through a data and determine if there is sufficient data for the two agencies to certify our levy. The Army Corps of Engineers needs to represent our interests in this process. Essentially, our levies exist today as they did the day they were built. We cannot understand why the Corps of Engineers will not or is not allowed to stand by their work. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I have some solutions that I've submitted and uh, I would be uh, more than thankful that you guys uh, did give us this, this uh, opportunity and uh, I will submit any written information you request. Thank you. Uh, Representative Melhoff, I uh, appreciate you coming here. As I said earlier, uh, it's a long ways from Montana to Washington, D.C. I also appreciate your tireless effort on, on, on this uh, issue for, for your constituents. Um, you've seen the levy certification inspection uh, from a local perspective. Uh, would you please let me know or explain to me what you see as a potential solution? Thank you, Senator Tester. Uh, for your efforts too on this. And uh, what I would see from the local perspective that we have is, uh, first of all, we are also, uh, our, our flood uh, levy system was designed for a 500 year flood. And uh, what we've had very little change in our area over the years, like some areas have an awful lot of of uh, new development. Ours looks about like it did 50 years ago. So we've had very little change upstream. And uh, in fact, modern farm practices with no-till farming is holding the moisture even more in place, uh, which should result in even less chance of, of runoff in the spring. But <clears throat> what I see as a solution to this is the Corps of Engineer needs to take over responsibility for levy certification. The Corps has the data all the way back to the construction of our two levy systems in Cascade County, plus data from annual and periodic inspections. Number two, when the annual and periodic uh, inspections are completed, the Army Corps should require their contractors to collect enough data to meet FEMA certification requirements. That would result in a great cost savings to our local taxpayers. Number three, the local levy district elected officials need to be given back their original responsibility of overseeing levy maintenance only. They, they're, uh, for the most part, unpaid people that thought when they took the job for the local districts, their only responsibility was going to be to maintaining levies. And that's a very good uh, responsibility for them because they see the levies on a day-to-day -day basis. Now they're told they're the owners, they're responsible, and uh, they have some liability problems. And they're saying, wait a minute, we're not getting paid for doing this and we're risking personal liability problems? That's a real, a real dilemma. And lastly, the Corps of Engineers should do a risk assessment on all Corps sponsored levies around the nation and FEMA should exempt levy system designed to withstand a 100, 100 year or more flood that the core deemed to be of low risk. Everybody's being treated as one here, one shoe fits all. And as been said by uh, Mr. Rash, that's, that's the problem that we're facing is that's not the case in many areas. Some areas have levees that, that do have uh, a lot of problems, but our area and uh, apparently Mr. Rash's area are, are living under levees that have been well maintained and should be put in a different category to make the certification process much easier. Thank you.